Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemarkam. If you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. In today's video, we are exploring deep into one of the most important palladium catalyzed cross coupling reaction, the Stille cross coupling reaction. This reaction plays a crucial role in carbon carbon form formation. Let's take a closer look out how it works. The Stille cross coupling reaction was discovered by John Stille in the late 1970. According to this reaction, organic electrophile react with organostanine in the presence of palladium catalysis, which produce new carbon carbon coupling product along with this tin pi product. So, here you see in the place of R1 can be aryl, alkynyl, alkynyl, or acyl, in place of X either chlorine, bromine or iodine or triflate or acetates. So in case of R2, either aryl, alkynyl or allyl can be useful. When it comes to the palladium catalysis, palladium 2 pre-catalyst can be useful as well as palladium 0 catalyst also can be useful. So these three catalysis can be useful for mainly in this still cross coupling reaction. When it comes to the Ligand, sterically hinted or electron rich ligands typically useful for this kind of reaction. So here you see this one is a sterically hinted ligand, this ligand known as XPAS and similarly this one also electron rich as well as sterically hinted ligand. Before moving to the catalytic cycle, we should see the organostanine properties. Organostanines are air and moisture stable and tolerant to many functional groups due to the low polarity of carbon tin bonds. Unlike Kumada coupling and Negasi cross coupling, where argno magnesium and argno zinc are involved respectively, so these bonds are high polarity bond when compared to the argno stannines. The polarity difference can be easily visualized by the electron negativity values. Somewhat similar polarity nature of carbon tin bond is carbon boron bond in argno boronic acids. So where the organoboronic acid is useful for Suzuki cross coupling reaction. This Kumada coupling and Negasi cross coupling, as well as Suzuki cross coupling reaction, we have already discussed in our channel. If anyone missed that video, don't worry, you can find the link in the description box. So, apart from this, the organostanines are easily synthesized under mild reaction conditions. However, these organostanines are highly toxic compound and sometimes the stannin byproduct is often inseparable. So next moving on the catalytic cycles of still a cross coupling reaction. The catalytic cycle started with palladium 0 or palladium 2 precatalyst. When you take the palladium 2 precatalyst, if you use some suitable ligand that quickly generate palladium 0 in situ. So this one is a 14 electron species. The next step which quickly undergo oxidative addition with argono electrophiles so which produce 16 electron species which then undergo transmetallation with organostanines which produce this 16 electron species the next step which quickly undergo transis isomerization since which is required for next step that is reductive elimination so which produce carbon carbon coupling product now let's break down the mechanism step by step. The first one is oxidative addition. In this step, palladium zero react with argono halide where palladium insert itself into the bond forming palladium two intermediate. Initially, which produce cis complex. So this one is a kinetic addition intermediate, which quickly isomerizes to produce thermodynamically more stable intermediate, which is trans. In general, electron rich and sterically hinted aryl halides undergo slower oxidative addition and are often poor substrate as a result in still a cross coupling reaction. And oxidative addition reaction is known to proceed with a retention stereochemistry when you use vinyl halides. For example, here you see when you take the vinyl iodide, so this one is a cis vinyl iodide, when you use under this reaction condition which produce this corresponding intermediate, so here you see the stereochemistry is retained. And similarly, when you take this transvinyl iodide, so here also stereochemistry retention takes place. However, the oxidative addition of carbon sp3 organo electrophiles 
which usually follows SN2 type of reaction. We already know that SN2 type of reaction always produce inverse and stereochemistry. For example, benzyl derivatives. So here you see this one is a benzyl derivative. When you use under this reaction condition, I mean oxidative addition, which produce inverse and configuration. The stereochemistry of oxidative addition of allyl halide depends on the nature of the solvent. So now you see this allyl halide react with this Arcnostanin under palladium zero catalysis, which produce this corresponding product. When benzene as a solvent, which produce retention stereochemistry containing product. When use of acetonitrile as a solvent, which produce exclusively inversion stereochemistry, which clearly indicated that nature of solvent plays a huge role in this particular reaction. Next, the beta hydride elimination can be a serious problem in still a cross coupling reaction when you use alkyl halide that can be quickly undergo beta hydride elimination this typically requires a syn coplanar alignment of hydride and palladium next moving on transmetallization in this step organostanes transfer its r group to the palladium complex this is facilitated by the palladium center and the tin halide exchange takes place and transmetallation is proposed to be the rate determining step with the most of the substrate and relative order of ligon transfer from tin. So here you see alkanyl has high transfer rate when compared to the alkyl. So alkyl one of the least transfer rate. So in general, electron poor stannins undergo slower transmetallation and are often classified as a poor substrate for still a cross coupling reaction. In transmetallation, there are two types of mechanism is known. So one is cyclic trans transmetallation and another one is open transmetallation. The first one is cyclic transmetallation. So X means halide. So when your substrate undergo by cyclic transmetallation, so your final product stereochemistry should be retention stereochemistry. And, and most of, mostly the solvent should be a non-coordinating solvent. Next, moving on, open transmetallation. So here you see X means halide or triflates. So the stereochemistry is inversion. That means that when substrate undergo by open transmetallation, so your stereochemistry of end of the product should be inversion stereochemistry. The solvent mostly coordinating solvent, for example, acetonitrile or HMBA or DMSO like that. In case of Argon triflate non coordinating solvent also produce inverse and stereochemistry of the final product. So now you take this example. So now you see this chiral argonostanin that undergoes by palladium catalyzed cross coupling reaction with this benzyl chloride. So here you see 98% of retention configuration of final product is observed. So that indicated that. So this reaction undergoes by cyclic transmetallation. So this, this one we can easily visualize by the choice of solvent. So here you see this one is a non-coordinating solvent. So next moving on another example. So here you see this chiral organostanin that undergoes by carbon-carbon coupling reaction with this benzyl chloride. So in this reaction produce 65 percentage of inverse and stereochemistry of final carbon carbon coupling product so that indicated that clearly this reaction undergo by open transmetallation so this one we can easily visualize by the size of solvent so here you see they used hmba solvent hmba solvent means that one is a coordinating solvent so based on solvent, we can easily predict the final stereochemistry of still lake cross coupling reaction. So next moving on, reductive elimination. So reductive elimination is a final step of our catalytic cycle. So reductive elimination, there are three types of mechanism is known. So one is concentrated reductive elimination, one is association, and another one is a dissociation. We see one by one, concentrated reductive elimination means that so the bond formation as well as bond breaking both are takes place simultaneously that produce this carbon-carbon coupling product. In association mechanism, one of the ligand coordinate with palladium that produce this new intermediate. So because of this intermediate makes that this R, R1 group close to each other which produce this corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product. 
So the final one is a dissociation mechanism. So one of the ligands dissociate from palladium center, then followed by reductive elimination takes place to produce this corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product. So when it comes to the stereochemistry point of view, reductive elimination always takes place with retention stereochemistry. So additives are plays a crucial role in still a cross-coupling reaction. There are three types of additives are known in still a cross-coupling reaction. The first one is copper-based additive and lithium chloride additive and final one fluoride-based additive. So first we see the copper-based additives. So copper one salt can increase the reaction rate. So now you take this example. So here you see iodobenzene react with vinyl stannines under palladium catalysis. So now you see without copper iodide additive, the relative rate of reaction is one. When you use 10 mole percentage of copper iodide, that drastically increase the relative rate of reaction. So that clearly indicated that copper plates a crucial role to accelerate the reaction rate. So the exact role of copper is the scavenging of free ligand. So the free ligand some give somewhat trouble in the transmetallation step. So that can eliminate when you use copper based additives. So next we moving on lithium chloride based additives. So lithium chloride is often used to enhance the reaction rate. So which is believed to the stabilizing the transient state during the oxidative addition. So in addition to that, lithium chloride also improve the rate of transmetallization by increasing the solvent polarity. Now you take this example. So now you see this organion electrophile react with vinyl stannine under palladium condition. So now you see here L means triphenyl phosphine ligand. So without additive, 100 percentage yield and with additive. So here you see lithium chloride additive. So the reaction yield drastically dropped. So when use of triphenyl arsine ligand, so without additive, so that reaction suffered to produce this corresponding product. So now you see the addition of lithium chloride additive, which drastically increased the yield of this particular product. So here you see the triphenyl phosphine is electron rich ligand when compared to the triphenyl arsine. So when we use electron rich ligand that facilitate the oxidative addition that undergo faster, when we use less electron donating ligands that restrict the oxidative or slow down the oxidative addition reaction. So at the time when we use lithium chloride additive that enhance the reaction rate. So that indicates that clearly lithium chloride is effective in only for slow oxidative addition reaction. So next we moving on another type of additive is fluoride. Fluoride can coordinate to the arnotin reagent to form a hypervalent tin species that is believed to undergo transmetallization at a faster rate. So now you take this example. So this organotroflate react with vinyl stannine under palladium catalysis, which produces corresponding product. So here you see when use of lithium chloride additive that produce 95 percentage of yield, that relative rate is one. So when use of tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride that enhance the reaction rate. So here you see the react relative rate is three. So yield is 87, which clearly indicated that fluoride ion accelerate the reaction rate. So this is the, so this is the hypervalent tin species, which is believed that formation in situ under this reaction condition. So let's see some of the examples based on our still a cross coupling reaction. So this is the first example. So here you see this organostanine react with this azyl chloride under palladium catalysis, which produces corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product. So this is the another example. Now you see, so this is the intramolecular coupling. So here you see the organostanine parts here. So this one going to couple with this, this organotriflate, which produce this corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product.
So this is the another example. So here you see the heterocyclic containing organo electrophile which react with this organostanin which produce this corresponding product. So here you see they used fluoride as a one of the additive for in this reaction. So this is the another example. So here you see this one is a heterocyclic organostanin which react with this heterocyclic organo electrophile under palladium catalysis which produce this corresponding carbon carbon coupling product. So next moving on another interesting example. So we already seen that electron rich organo electrophile one of the poor substrate for still a cross coupling reaction. Similarly electron withdrawing group containing organo stannines are one of the poor substrate for still a cross coupling reaction. However, this can be easily coupled each other when we use proper reaction condition with proper additive. So here you see in this reaction condition, they use sterically hinted as well as electron rich phosphine and copper iodide as a additive and also fluoride ion as a one of the additive which makes that this carbon-carbon coupling reaction is feasible to produce this corresponding product. So this is the another example. So here you see this one is a chlorine containing substrate. So chlorides are one of the poor substrate for cross coupling reactions. So this can be affected by using proper ligand as well as additive selection which produce this corresponding product. So this is the another example. So this one also interesting example. So the vinyl, substituted vinyl containing organostanins are one of the poor substrate. So this reaction can be overcome by using proper additive selection which produce this corresponding carbon-carbon coupling product. So this is the, our another example. So now you see so this natural product synthesis can be affected by still a cross coupling reaction to produce this corresponding product. So next moving on some more examples. So this reaction involving the stereochemistry. So now you see when you take this chiral organostanine which reacting with benzyl chloride under palladium catalysis and copper cyanide as a additive which produce a retention configuration that means that so this reaction undergoes by cyclic transmetallation. So this one we can easily predict by the use of solvent. So here you see they use toluene as a solvent that indicated that in this reaction transmetallation takes place by cyclic manner. So next moving on another example. So one of the challenging still a cross coupling reaction is carbon sp3 and sp2 cross coupling reaction so this can this one also can be affected by using proper ligand and additive selection that can be possible to make this carbon carbon coupling product summary to wrap up the still a cross coupling reaction is a powerful tool for making carbon carbon bond However, there are few things to watch out for, especially the toxicity of organostanin, which requires careful handling and disposal. Despite the challenges posed by organotin toxicity, its broad functional group tolerance, mild reaction conditions, and ability to form a complex molecule make it a invaluable in the field like medicinal chemistry and material science. I hope you found this overview of still a cross coupling reaction helpful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more chemistry content coming your way. So here you see there are the some of the practice problem. When you get a free time, just, just to give you a try. And finally, thanks for watching and bye bye.